breaking news on Patriots broadcast. Since the Seven Years' War, the British have fallen into war debt. The British have enforced a levy called the Stamp Act. This tax enforces all printed material to be paid for. Colonists are angry because they did not have direct representation in the Parliament that levied this act. Although the British government have lifted the Stamp Act, they put into place the Townshed Acts. The main purpose of these acts were to gain revenue for England. Colonists have boycotted English products. Tensions grew until on March 5th, a group of Boston boycotters came into conflict with a dozen British soldiers. Five colonists were killed. Colonists formed committees of correspondence. These committees acted as a loose government. A particular committee in Maryland have formed a Continental Congress. Members are urging to boycott all products associated with British tyranny. And now to Lillian Longworth, who has three eyewitnesses. Mary, I'm here in Lexington and I'm hearing whispers of war. I'm here to investigate the growing conflict between the British and the colonies. Here comes someone now. Sir, sir, could you please answer a few questions? No time. The British are coming. Please, sir, just a moment. Okay, let's talk and write. Get on. Would you like to elaborate on the rising tension between the British and the colonies? Well, I'm Paul Revere, and me and Dawes are on a mission to inform the people of Lexington and Concord on the oncoming British. And what specifically will we be informing them of? That our leaders, Hancock and Adams, are in danger of being captured, and our military supplies in Concord in threat of being taken by the British. Now one last question. What do you expect will happen in the upcoming weeks? Well, I have a feeling that total war will break out. Maybe in Lexington. Gotta go! The British! Well, that was Paul Revere for you, riding off on his horse, going to save the day. Now let's see what Mary has to say. News flash. Shots were fired at Lexington and Concord. Lillian is on the scene. Shots were recently fired at Lexington, and now American militias and the British Army have come to Concord, where they're going to fight the North Bridge. Here they are now. Crossing the Delaware. Take a look. Thank you, Lillian. And now to the Battle of Saratoga. Well, look at this now, Mary. It looks like a battle is about to occur at Saratoga. <laughs> battle we just witnessed. The British really fell there and was quite a victory for Benedict Arnold and his men. Here is Benedict Arnold now. Benedict, what were the factors that led you to win the battles of Saratoga and for the Burgoyne to lose? Well, our success is primarily based on our superior strategies and planning. I foresaw that Burgoyne would try and attack our entrenched men, so I made sure to put reinforcements there. We also had support from Washington, my brother. He sent troops up north to support us during this battle, and it really helped. Burgoyne, on the other hand, had no reinforcements. I've heard many rumors of what's to come next. Could you explain what this victory really means for America? Well, due to this great success, we now have France as an ally, 
and Spain is on our side. It's a really turning point in the war. Thank you for that, Benedict Arnold. And now back to Mary. Today, we have a renowned professor, Professor Professorson. Thank you, Miss Matthews, for that lovely introduction. Hello, I'm Professor Professorson, and I'm here to learn you a thing about the American Revolution. The impacts included the creation of a new nation along with the idea of nationalism. The struggle for freedom from Britain was launched in 1776 with the Declaration of Independence and the war followed. The 13 colonies won and became a new country and were the most radical in the contemporary Western world. The second was that slavery was abolished. The new wave of enlightenment and the pronouncement of the American Revolution spurred ideas of equality and liberty for all and slavery violated the very ideals. People no longer accepted that this was just a way of life, and with, the, and with the help of the American Revolution, along with secular, economic, and political enforcement, slavery was ended. The third impact of the Revolution would be the rise of women's rights. Like slavery, the ideas of equality perpetuated by the American Revolution and Enlightenment came into play here. It started out as suffrage, but became much more than that, as women, and soon women were admitted into universities. By 1914, two million people were a part of the National American Women's Suffrage Organization that started, what started out as a radical movement soon spread to the world and changed history.